Hey guys, I'm Bailey at Studio 67 and today we're going to be interviewing Eve of Eden. How would you define your style of music? Um, well, on my website um, I use a quote from a review that someone wrote a while back. It, Socially conscious folk and femme rock. Nice. But I also, I also um, use the word mystical because I really feel that music is coming from like a higher plane. Yeah spiritually so it kind of influences the music okay for sure so who or what do you think has had the most influence on your music and your decision to pursue it well it's definitely um who and what um over the years i think it's the feedback that i've gotten from people who i've sung for and who i've you know, known who who encouraged me along the way, mm -hmm. and you know, there's really a handful of people in my life who, you know, I never thought I would pursue music as a career path because it's so challenging. But there are definitely a handful of people. One of my friends, Dana Reed, who is actually the designer who did my album cover, um, she is definitely one of the people that right when I was like ready to quit, she was like. Yeah. No way, you're not quitting. And she really encouraged me and helped me kind of stay on the path. Yeah, well the album cover looks amazing, by the way. She did a really good job with that. Thank you, I'm sure she will be happy to hear it. I will let her know. Thank so, you. So, your song, Water to Fire, was inspired by an environmental issue that's going on. Can you tell us more about that and your motivation behind the song itself? Sure. Well, um, the song was a co-write that I did with uh, three three friends. My actually, my husband and two friends um, from New York State, um, Judy Steele and Cody Ritson. And what happened was we were asked to um, actually we were we were hanging out, but somebody had had mentioned that they were putting a compilation together for an environmental album, and so we were we were working on this song and, and it was finished and just as the Standing Rock thing was starting it, it was actually so apropos because the words were it was almost like what we wrote was like psychically in tune with what was happening yeah. in Standing Rock you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so the timing was really interesting also because um, well the Native American quality of the song was something that was intuitive. It came through, like uh, like I mentioned before, there's kind of a mystical quality to the music in some respects. And and that part of the song kind of emerged when um, we were sitting around a campfire in upstate New York, um, which was traditional Iroquois land. And um, I felt like there was like ancestors, Native American ancestors coming um, around us spiritually speaking and uh, singing or chanting that that phrase so it's definitely apropos I hope that answers your question but yeah uh, the music video itself I think that the, the footage and the way it all lined up was definitely in, intuitive and it, it just came together in a profound way yeah yeah so is there if there was one thing you wanted to communicate to your fans what would it be I, I think it would be that um, love is the greatest force in the universe and that we should overcome our differences or try, you know, to overcome our differences, um, whatever those differences may be, and to focus on the thing that, that brings people together, Absolutely. together. Absolutely. Hi, this is Aliza Hava from Eve of Eden, and this is Calling Destiny. It is saw me before Maybe in a dream Maybe you're imagining And I knew you were pure The second I saw I saw you smiling That night by the fire You told me the tale Upon the prophet's trail You're out 
definitely be Greg Allman. I had a chance to meet him a few years back and um, it was a very special experience for me and ever since then it's kind of been you know at the top of my list. Yeah. I hope I get to do one day. So do you still get nervous performing? Do you enjoy performing live or in the studio more? Um, I am very much a live performer. Um, I love recording too. I think both are really fun and they're both very different. Um, I come alive when there's an audience to share the music with um, because I feel like it's important to be singing for people and to people. Yeah. Um, so definitely performing is, is big for me in terms of also pro like release like I'm one of those people that if I don't get out and sing I start to feel, feel a little you know stuck yeah because it's the music has to come through and I have to share it yeah in order to feel alive I get it I'm in my truck at least three times a week just jamming by myself because I have to have like that time so I definitely get that but do you still get nervous prior to performing it really depends on the gig. It totally depends. Sometimes not at all, and sometimes definitely. And it, I think it depends on, it just depends on the, the time and the place and like what kind of gig it is, Yeah. you know? So, 
Do you have a favorite song from your debut album, Natural State? Um, you know, it's it's hard because they're all like my little babies, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Um, each one of those songs is based off of something that I went through personally. And um, I think that if I had to choose a favorite, it would probably be Ruby Love. Okay. Yeah. This is Aliza Hava from Eve of Eden. This song is Ruby Love. I know I've seen your face In another time In another place Is there some secret door To another world where I knew you before And after all we have seen I know this ain't a lucid dream And though our love is purely faint It fails somehow
what is the best advice that anybody has ever given you? That's a hard one because I've got a lot of over the years. <laughs> um, recently, I was at a conference for songwriters in Los Angeles, and there was a common phrase that people kept mentioning that for songwriters, you know, like something that can be translated, I think, across any genre and any industry, really. But you know, I'm someone who takes my craft pretty seriously and I want to, I want everything to be perfect, you know, and sometimes that can really block you if you're trying to achieve perfection mm -hmm. every time you write something. So the piece of advice was dare, dare to suck, dare to suck, you know, like it doesn't have to be perfect. Just do it, do it. Just get it out there. Dare to suck. I thought that was really good advice. I like that. Yeah. So. If you had to choose a theme song for the rest of your life, what would it be? Interesting. Um, it's a great question. Really great question. Um, so one of my favorite songs of all is a song by the Indigo Girls. It's called Love, Love, and it's beautiful. It's a really beautiful song, and it talks about all these you know, aspects of life and love and if you've never heard it, definitely check it out. Love's Recovery by the Indigo Girls. That could be a theme song for the rest of my life, maybe, but for maybe that would have been the soundtrack to maybe the first half of my life. <laughs> but I don't know, the second half I, I would hope it would be something upbeat, like a awesome Stevie Wonder song. You know, something that like celebrate good times. <laughs> That's not Stevie Wonder, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah. Good Just something one. good and upbeat, something to, like dance along with. Yeah. Yeah. So, what are your future music goals? Well, I would really, um, I'm, I'm really hoping to be able to tour more uh, in the coming year, tour internationally, go to the UK. Um, I've been wanting to tour in Ireland for a while, and I really want to make that happen. Okay. Um, I have a kind of interest in the culture there, in the ancient culture and the Gaelic language. So I'm really about going there and, and kind of exploring it musically. And also, um, you know, I want to keep cranking out records. I've got, I've got a whole other album of material ready to record right now. So, um, yeah, just keep writing, playing, recording. One day I would like to build um, a studio, a very special studio um, for for recording sacred music, okay. which I think is something that, you know, is becoming more, more interesting now. Um, Anyway, that's something that I'm, I would love to do one day. Yeah. What is the best way for fans to keep in touch with you? Um, any social media, Facebook, um, email list definitely would be a good way because I send out email newsletters with um, information about upcoming shows or music videos and stuff like that. Um, so my website is eveofedenmusic.com. And it's the same on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, Eve of Eden Music is like the URL. So if you go to Instagram.com slash Eve of Eden Music, you'll find me. All right. Well, thank you very much for taking the time to do this. Well, thank you guys so much. And um, have a wonderful rest of the week. You too. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, this is Aliza Hava from Eve of Eden. And... This song is called More Than Anything. Love may come, love may go. What's the reason? I don't know. All these changes. 
want to make Sometimes life, dear, is hard to take Searching high, searching low For that feeling I used to know Found it once, may I find it again All in time, but until then What I want to know more than Have I made a big mistake while I'm 